The ritual is over. The young couple have been married in the sight of God and those of their family who were still speaking to them. Soon they'll greet their guests, cut the cake, unwrap their wedding gifts, a marriage made in heaven, tea sets and toasters made in Taiwan. A bride made in 10 seconds flat. It happens every day. A superficial, outmoded institution? Well, that's one charge often leveled against me. But today I'm looking at the greatest initiation ceremony in the Western world, the wedding. And not only the great day itself, but the courtship, the connubial countdown. <laughs> Even in today's liberated society, many young couples can't wait to rush headlong for the altar. Madly in love, they forget that soon they will have to knuckle down to the sheer honest boredom that is the backbone of any true marriage. They marry in haste and repent in Newport Pagnall. <laughs> Some people are shocked by today's alternative to marriage, shacking up. But some 400 years ago, here in this tiny Suffolk village, the custom of gumping wasn't so good. Gumping was a form of trial marriage. A lusty young peasant would fall head over heels in love and he'd take his heart's desire into this very house for ten days of passionate hanky-panky and unbridled gumping. <laughs> if after ten days things didn't work out and the young man discovered he preferred girls, <laughs> nobody thought the lesson. Do people fall in love? And is our traditional British reserve a stumbling block? We may have stiff upper lips, but does everything else hang in abeyance? Can we learn from our continental cousins, perhaps the French connection? Oh, 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 oh la la, oh. mon amour que je t'adore. Oui. C'est magnifique, mm, incroyable. Oui, je te donne. Oh, further down the Mediterranean, there's the Italian job. Sei fortissimo, sei formidabile. Guarda, ti voglio un bene che. But in England it's a different story. <laughs> But that ceiling needs white washing. <laughs> Arranging a wedding can put a great emotional strain on the bride's mother. Maisie Eccles finds the prospect of her daughter's wedding next Saturday less than thrilling. When you're straightening Sandra's veil, Maisie, I expect there'll be a few tears shed. Well, I've promised myself not to get weepy, but it'll bring it all back to me. My hairy jilted me. He stood you up at the altar. He stood me up at the altar and threw bricks at me. So you suffered a severe blow to your nuptials. Oh, they were black and blue for months. <laughs> I was all broken, Mr. Wicker. If they turned at a distant public transport system, I'd have chucked myself under a bus. <laughs> well, happily, you didn't do anything so rash, and eventually you married. Yeah. To Sid Eccles, he was as bad. I gave that man ten kids, and he don't love me. Never mind. Think what it would have been like if he did. <laughs> anyway, Maisie, I'm sure that Saturday will be a glittering occasion. Ah, afraid not. Very down to earth. A rough and ready wedding. The groom is rough and the bride more than ready. <laughs> While the Eccles girl was going down the aisle, a rather more fashionable wedding took place here. Maisie's misgivings about marriage are echoed in Mayfair. <laughs> I'm your only aunt on your mother's side. I fly all the way from Nairobi thinking you're marrying that lovely Nigel Peters. And instead it's this, this, well how could you? I mean it's 15 stone, balding and cross-eyed. Oh, you needn't whisper, he's deaf as well. <laughs> At one time the only lasting evidence of a wedding were a few faded photographs. But this is the age of the video revolution. Now you too can record the most important day of your life. Years hence, when videos like Red Heart Spankers and Massage Girls of Bangkok 
have lost their magic, you can relive the splendor of your own wedding day. And for a modest outlay, have Alistair Burnett provide a royal commentary. <laughs> By my side, that's how I see us. Today, on this grey, rather drizzly morning, a crowd of some three or four has jammed the pavement outside the registry office to catch a glimpse of the bride, Miss Sybil Buck, and her handsome groom, Herbert Groin. I think, yes, there unmistakably is the bride's mother, Mrs. Drusilla Buck. Mrs. Buck has been lining the wedding route since dawn and is probably feeling the strain. This beautiful brass plaque draws our attention to this lovely old registry office that has stood unchanged down through the years since 1954. I do believe, yes, here now, tight-lipped, drunk, is the bride's father. I have often down the street before <laughs> the place is always nice to me. And here, here at last, the lovely pair of words can hardly convey how radiant and happy the night. The young bride, obviously, full of life. Sybil Buck is favouring Princess Diana Powder Blue with this year's fashionable high front hemline. <laughs> While her handsome groom is resplendent in his man at CNA suit. There are two great moments in a woman's life. The day she marries and the day she has her first child. Sybil's having the unique joy of both on the same day. <laughs> the perfect end to a fairy tale wedding. This is where I came in and this is where I'm getting out fast. When you've been a bachelor as long as I have, there's something about marriage that throws you into a panic. They say whoever is lucky enough to catch the bride's bouquet will be the next one to get courted, wedded and buried. As for me, I'm not superstitious. Good night.